This is Rob with SafeNet AT, and today we're configuring a Luna client to work with the Luna HSM SA appliance. The window on the left is my command prompt on a local Windows machine. The window on the right is a putty session into the Luna SA HSM appliance. I'll be using remote PED for this demonstration, so I already have PED server running on this Windows machine. And on the appliance, I run HSM PED Connect to initialize that connection. Next up, I run HSM Login, and that allows me to create partitions, assign the client, etc. So the first thing I want to do on the appliance is actually create the partition using the partition create command. When doing this, be sure to write down or take a picture of the password presented on the PED if you're using PED auth. Our first step will be to change that password to something we can remember. Now we use the partition change password command to change the partition from the randomly generated PED partition to one that we can remember. This is option three, specify a new password for the partition owner. Here's where we enter that password that was generated on the PED, and then we give it a new password. Since we're using a PED auth appliance, the first thing that I always do is enable activation and auto activation. This means that once we use the PED connection once to activate the partition, It'll maintain that activated state, including short power outages. So we use the partition change policy command to change policies 22 and 23. Setting them to a value of 1 enables activation and auto activation. Now that we've enabled auto activation, we actually do partition activate. That will prompt us both for the user password and then for the PED. From this point on, as long as we know the password, we can use this partition without having to present the PED key. Now on the client, we need to create a certificate. Since we're using static IP addressing in this demo, I use the IP address for the name. Okay, now that we've created the client certificate, we need to transfer that to the appliance. For this, we'll be using PSCP. If we were using Linux, we'd use the SCP command. Now that we've transferred the client certificate to the appliance, the next step is to retrieve the SA appliance certificate. If you ever forget the context of available commands for VTL, just type VTL and hit enter. You'll see a list of all the options. We want to register the SA now, so we use the add server command. For this, using static addressing, I'm giving it the name, the same as the IP address, and then specifying the server that we just retrieved from the appliance. Now back on the appliance, we want to actually register that client. So we use the client register command. We can give it any name we like here and specify the IP address. 
The essay will look through the certificates that have been copied to it for one that matches that IP address and will register it. Then we assign a partition to that client so that the client has a virtual HSM to use. That's using the client assigned partition. We can verify this was successful if we do the client show command. This will show us information about the client, including what partition is assigned to it. It's also a good idea to do a double check with the partition show command and verify that the partition is activated. Now that that's all configured, it should work. So let's come back to the client and do VTL verify. And that does show our partition that's assigned. Another great way to check that everything's working is to use the multi-token tool. This is multitoken2.exe. Mode will be RSA sign verify, key size 1024. And we we'll use that single slot, but run multiple threads against it. So we can see here that we are doing crypto operations using the SA partition that we have assigned to this client. So it looks like everything is working as expected.